everyone, welcome back to the layout. The Union Pacific Railroad Evanston subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and your host for a special product review video. I will be reviewing mainly the new Athern Genesis SD70 ACE that just came out um, last week. And I will also be reviewing uh, some covered hoppers, also after in Genesis, the ACF 4600 three bay center flow hoppers. And I have some uh, CNW uh, hoppers for those. So let's take a look at these new products. Uh, before we do so though, I wanted to uh, mention something about a previous product review that I did on the AC 4400s and I reviewed these and I did not catch that my CNW had an LED out. So I had to send that back, contacted uh, Lombard Hobbies and I talked to them, told them what happened. They said they still had one in stock and uh, before I knew it, it was in the mail. So I should have it tomorrow. So looking forward to that, and then I'll take the unit that I have back to the shop at some point in time. So uh, great service from Lombard Hobbies, and we have here another box from Lombard Hobbies that we're going to take a look at. Uh, some new things that I got. Uh, while I'm opening this box, be sure to like and subscribe uh, for this video. would really appreciate that. And, of course, if you have any comments at the end, uh, make sure you do that as well. Uh, but here's what's in the box. First of all, I did get a three set of Atherin Genesis ACF 4600 three bay center flow hoppers. These are CNW uh, with the UP shield on it. So I definitely like to get a lot of those. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to get any more uh rolling stock that's fifty dollars or more uh, these came out to about forty three dollars a piece i also got some wheel sets uh by the way uh if you get the three set from lombard hobbies they come out to about forty three dollars by themselves or fifty bucks so it's definitely worthwhile getting the three uh, but anyway i got some wheel sets uh, i'm going to be doing some uh weathering here eventually and going to be replacing some wheel sets i always thought it'd be a good idea to have some wheel sets on hand so these are the uh inner mountain wheel sets which are supposed to be pretty good so got a hundred of each and then i also got some more couplers i always want to make sure i have some of these on hand these are the 148 uh, standard size uh, whisker uh, couplers and then of course the main thing was the Welch's fruit snacks no not that the main thing is the new locomotive the Atherin Genesis Union Pacific SD70 ACE and this is the modern one the more modern one with the PTC antennas there was another one that they had with the yellow stripes and so on uh, but did not have the PTC antennas. So this is the, even though both of the Union Pacific road numbers are yellow sills, um, which makes them the more modern uh, category as opposed to the red sills. Uh, they, this one, this particular road number 8679 also had uh, PTC antennas, which makes them more modern so uh, you have the parts diagram there the usual propaganda the <coughs> excuse me the warranty information i did contact after and they said to send it back to where i bought it from oh well, so that's exactly what i did i didn't want to wait for after anyway i probably would have taken them a lot longer than Lombard Hobbies getting it in the mail the day I talked to them. So very happy about that. 
All right, so here we have the new Atherne SD70 ACEs. Now, I, I already have uh, two Atherne SD70 ACEs, but uh, this is a little bit newer version. Now, I was kind of uh, curious to see what was going on with these uh, because they did not say they were Generation 2. Uh, by the way, I had a hard time getting that stupid sleeve off of it. It was like glued on there. If you notice, I kind of skipped a bunch of uh, video footage. It took me a long time to get that off of there. Um, so I'm not sure what that was all about. But I did get it off, and then I will able to take out the treasured locomotive. And here we have it. Now, I, like I said, I have some of these, two of them. I wanted to definitely get some more. I actually have three of them if you count the uh, Katie Heritage Unit that I have. But I wanted to see if there was any difference. This is not a Generation 2, I don't think. So I was curious whether they would have lighted uh, number boards and lighted... Um, trucks for walking around the trucks and lights for the walkways and stuff. The detail looks pretty similar to the older AC 70 ACEs that I have. So I don't think it's uh, much updated. Although there definitely is some good uh, detail. So here we get some uh, close up looks at it. And uh, there is a lot of details. Now, one thing that is an upgrade from previous AC 70 ACEs is the roller bearings do turn on these units. They do not on the previous ones. The paint is uh, very well applied and opaque and all that. And definitely a lot of good detail. And again, you have the roller bearings that turn in the trucks and here you can kind of get a good look at some of the detail try to get as close as I can without it getting blurry now one thing I notice on these is that there's not much detail on the top as far as decals go for the AC 4400s which are G2 generation 2 units from Ather and Genesis there was a lot of decals on the on the uh, top of the locomotive. This one did not have any. Now I'm not sure if that's a um, GE thing as opposed to EMD or if it's the fact that these are not uh, Generation 2's. These cost about the same. I didn't see any difference in the cost. I got these for 284 By the way, I looked around to see what other prices were at other websites and I couldn't find anywhere else where it was less than three hundred dollars and these were 284 at Lombard Hobbies a lot of them were 305 that seemed to be the most common price point here's the other side get a good look at the detail not too bad Uh, there is some uh, small writing de uh, decals, or printing, I should say. They don't really use decals, but they do have some very small, fine print. And it is definitely legible. I couldn't really get close enough with my camera. Now, what's cool is you look at the the truck side frame has a some... Uh, writings that's not painted is just in the casting it has the HTC dash 4 truck or whatever so I thought that was pretty cool although I never would have noticed that in normal operations here you can see that casting again very nice model very well done the grab irons and the windshield wipers all look nice all right, here we'll get a look at um, how it runs and the sound. 
Now there, it moved a little bit because I was trying to get the sound to come on. The one thing about these units, the sound is really, really loud. It's thunderous. I had to um, um, put the percentage down to 15%. Now, as you're seeing this video and, and hearing the horn and the startup of the, the locomotive, um, I had to, on the editing the video, I had to turn the sound down too so you could hear my voice. It was really loud. When I w put it on the programming track, I set it back to 15% and to get it to match my other locomotives. This is at uh, speed step one. So very, very smooth. And here's two and three and on up the no hesitation at all. It's very smooth. A little jerkiness on the camera. Now one thing you'll notice, it goes very smoothly and with the truck derailed. The back truck is off the track when I did this first pass. Didn't notice it until it came back. Believe it or not, I find the uh, HO locomotives harder to get on the track than N scale. I never had this type of thing, which you see right here, where the middle uh, wheel set is on the track and the front and back ones are off on each, both sides of the rail. Never had that hap happen in N scale. It happens all the time in HO, and I, I miss it. And anyway, enough about that. You can see it is a very smooth, very nicely running locomotive. By the way, the jerkiness, I used some stabilization uh, uh, software on my editing, my video editing. I use Pinnacle 22, by the way. Seems to do a good job of stabilizing it, but when you get really close, or in some cases it got even unusually jerky. But, anyway, here you can see the truck light. It does have a truck light. And then if you notice, there is a walkway light in the front as well. And... The number boards are lit. I'll have to check and see if my um, heritage unit has lit number boards. I think they. I think it does. I did have to do some adjusting of the light brightness because I didn't want it to be so bright that you could make that was obvious. So right now you just, you can obviously see that it's on. Uh, so I turned it down a little bit. Here's what it looks like at night. So this is day with the lights on. And you can't really see the truck lights or the walkway lights. And then this is when you turn off the lights and then you can definitely see the truck lights. And Now keep in mind that my camera makes allowances. So that actually looks... the mountainside and scenery is much brighter than it actually looks like but you can definitely get the idea now one thing I noticed before I started to run it is that the ditch lights were much brighter than the headlight so right now I'm at my computer and toning the ditch lights down there you go they are now about the same I think I put that at 185 compared to 255 for the headlight so I did do a lot of adjusting of the different lights. You can do that in programming these CV values. I'll let you figure that out on your own. All right, one other thing is the uh, covered hoppers. Now, as I said, I told myself I'm not going to get any more $50 cars. I have been kind of getting a lot of the uh, less expensive you know, in the 20s and 30s. And then these came out, and I had a hard time avoiding them because uh, for two reasons. One, I have that uh, 
uh, West Vaco Trona mm. mine and plant. And uh, so I need lots of covered hoppers. And then also, this is a CNW, which is part of UP, and then it does have the UP shield on it. So it definitely fits the Ray roll perfectly. Uh, you saw the uh, uh, extra end caps. Now, one thing that's different about this set of Atherin Genesis covered hoppers is that they now have their cars in the same type of plastic container uh, that the locomotives do. So that's a departure for them. And here you can see the initial uh, detail of the AFC 4600 three bay center flow hoppers. And again, if you buy these individually at Lombard Hobbies, uh, they're $50. They retail for 65 and they have them at 50 49.99 and then um, I the um, three packs they sell for 126.99 which comes out to about 43 dollars 42 43 dollars so again you can see some really nice uh, printing of very small fine details it's got the uh, reflective tape on the side and the uh, br the uh, brass etching uh, walkways now one of the biggest things for me of course is how well do they roll and these uh, roll very nicely sometimes the ones that have the uh, rotating caps on the trucks uh, sometimes they don't roll very well. These have the rotating roller bearings and they roll very nicely. As you can see, I put uh, Katie couplers on here already. I'm trying to do that right away. And the uh, height matches very well. I checked the wheel gauge too. Uh, I don't have video of that, but the wheel gauge was spot on. And the height for the couplers is also spot on. So that was, that was all very good. I uh, not only put on the uh, KD couplers, but I also uh, put on a resistor, a resistor on the wheel set, so they are uh, can be detected on the the, the railroad. So here you have them uh, coming by. Here's uh, covered hoppers first on a manifest train. Very nice looking cars. And forty two dollars I don't think was too bad for the the price. Here we're coming up the Wasatch grade with a green signal. And a trio of UP locomotives. Pulling the three new covered hoppers plus about uh, 29 additional cars. There's over 30 cars in this train. Yeah, I'm running, running alongside, catching up to it. Let's see it go by again. Pretty nice train. I have a lot of manifest trains on this layout. I have, uh, let's see, three, four of them that are just kind of run through manifest trains, although three of them do stop, or two or three of them stop at the Evanston Yard for car swap outs. And then I have two locals in addition to that. So altogether six uh, trains that I guess you could consider manifests. Which is more than any other types of trains. I have two coal trains, two stack trains, two uh, ethanol tank trains, and one auto rack train. Oh, also a maintenance of weight train and an excursion train. Altogether, uh, there are, um, I think, almost uh, 20 trains that run in an operating session. A 
I use the stabilization software here also. You might want to comment if you think it helps or makes it worse. I think it turned out pretty good. All right, here we have the new Atherin Genesis ACE. The layout is, for most part and for most purposes, is full when it comes to locomotives and rolling stock. I have enough locomotives for every train, enough cars for every train, enough cars for all the yards and sidings. I have an excursion train put together, a maintenance away, maintenance away train put together. I pretty much have all the rolling stock and locomotives that I need, which means I will never buy another one. Somehow I don't think that's going to be quite <laughs> the actuality. I, I am definitely going to cut back, though. The only things that I might get right now down the line is uh, the uh, SD70 ACEs. Um, Atherin also did one in the Southern Pacific Heritage Unit. It's not in yet, but I, th I think I have that on pre-order. And I'm still debating on whether I should get a um, big boy. Maybe yes, maybe no. All right, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more scenery uh, work on the update this coming Sunday. Have a great uh, weekend coming up starting tomorrow. Take care, everybody.